All right, we're talking about terrible shooting conditions today and the gear, the settings, and a few bonus tips to help you overcome those terrible conditions and still get good photos. I went out to possibly the worst conditions I've ever shot in, took some behind the scenes, still got some good photos, want to show you how bad this was. Even tougher than expected. Okay, so not only was it just a Friday night high school football game under the lights, they're just temporary <laughs> fake lights. And there weren't that many of them. So the end zones were... The end zones were basically completely dark. Pitch black. The field was unevenly lit. Bands of light across the field. It's a nightmare to shoot in. It also rained essentially most of the game. And it was cold just to throw that in there. And I had another issue pop up at halftime. But we'll get to that. First, let's see how to get some great photos in these terrible conditions. These first two things are going to sound a little bit corny. Uh, it's not gear settings related if you want that feel free to skip ahead. I think these things are actually very helpful to think about. So the first thing you need to do when you're shooting in these bad conditions, accept your circumstances. Whenever the conditions are this bad, <laughs> it means you can get some photos that you're never gonna get any other time. It's gonna suck. You're gonna get fewer photos. You're not gonna get the same quality images that you get on a sunny day game. It's gonna be bad. They're gonna be a little bit noisy. There might be some motion blur. It's not gonna be the same as before. And if you can accept this going into the game, it can allow you to get some different photos you may not have gotten before, right? You can look for some non-action photos, things on the sidelines, pre-game, portraits of players, fans cheering, details of the mud or the, you know, things on the jerseys, things that you're maybe not gonna get on a typical sunny day for a football game. Your shutter speed's gonna probably be a little bit slower if you're shooting in this really dark environment. So you want to kind of maybe focus on those more static images rather than just the action that's happening during the plays. You can get some more static things in between the plays. If you accept that, you know it's going to suck. It allows you to just be free and be like, you know what? That's my excuse. <laughs> it's bad weather. It's bad light. I'm doing what I can. You're going to get what you can. And then maybe you get something great. Now, the second thing you really need to do is evaluate the light, especially in this circumstance where it's temporary lights and the light is not even across the field, right? I looked at the end zones and I was like, I don't think I can actually really get a usable image from these end zones if someone scores, especially if they're coming at me because it's just pitch black. There's no light coming from behind the end zones. Actually, when the team started getting closer to the end zone, I would switch my settings and I would start focusing on the students around the end zone to get their reactions. Why try to take a photo that's not going to turn out well when you can get something else that may not be as good or exactly what you're looking for, but it's still gonna be something you can deliver to the client. And there were brighter, sp I wouldn't say bright, there were <laughs> less dark spots and really dark spots. Really sometimes what I would do, I'd, I'd look at that and be like, okay, I probably just need to like wait for the action to kind of come through one of those brighter spots. I'm gonna stand almost with my back to the light right there so the light is right in front of me and that's gonna give me the best settings if someone's coming through there. And you could even use aperture priority so that, right, if they're coming from the darkness into the light and you're on manual, if you're exposed for that really dark spot and they come into that light, then you're gonna be overexposed and you kind of ruined your chance to get a better photo with less noise or maybe a uh, faster shutter speed. Using aperture priority when the light is that different can actually help a lot. All right, now for the settings for this game and what I typically do at indoor or night games is I will start by just putting my shutter at about one one thousandth of a second, ISO 6400, and my f-stop as low as it can go. Typically with most of my lenses, that's f2.8. Take a picture, you know, when you get there pre-game, you want to have everything set up and ready to go for the game. So you're doing this all during pre-game. See that it's super dark, bump my ISO up to 8,000 or 10,000 and maybe drop my shutter down one or two clicks because I know it was so underexposed, I need a lot more light. So then I'll take another picture and I'll see like, okay, this maybe is a little bit better, but actually in this case, I just had to like keep bumping the ISO. I dropped the shutter down to maybe one 500th of a second, which is about as low as I ever wanna go. Again, this is probably the worst conditions I've ever shot in, so this is the highest ISO I've ever shot with. It's necessary, like I would prefer to have noise in the image and not motion blur because it's easier to kind of denoise the photo a little bit, which I'll get to a little bit with the editing because if an athlete's running by and they're blurry, it's really hard to fix that image. If it's noisy or just like a little bit bad light, you can make it black and white or you can do some other things to potentially make that a usable image rather than if it's just blurry, it's trash. So when shooting in this low light, it's really a trade-off between that shutter speed and that noise from the ISO 
talk about it more in another video. So if you want to watch that, feel free. Gear I use when it's really rainy out there. You can, you know, I always have like a trash bag on me. I can just throw some stuff in there if I need to keep it dry. If you don't have anything else, you can wrap this around your camera. Maybe cut a hole out, try to use that. Uh, lens cloths to wipe off the lenses because sometimes that rain is coming sideways and it gets on your lens. Could affect your image quality a little bit, so you want to try to wipe those off. Think Tank rain covers for 7200 and for my big 400. These are awesome. I love them. They're great. I've used them a lot and they really hold up well. They are more expensive, so don't want to purchase something that's a little bit more expensive. You can find these rain covers, which are essentially a bag, but they're shaped to, you know, your lens to, and then have some like bungee cords to, you know, lock on, which I've used them before. I got these and they're great. They work pretty well. It's just a little harder to shoot with. I always have one in my bag in case a surprise storm pops up or I forgot my rain covers and they work well. They are good enough, but they're typically like five or 10 bucks. So go get those, throw one in your bag. So it's always there. I also have some other towels and things to just like wipe down the gear, wipe down my hands, just to try to keep everything dry. And you just don't want to ruin your gear just for a couple photos. If it's really that bad, just don't shoot and just, you know, make sure the client knows. They should understand that. Because it was raining so much, I didn't bring out a third camera body. Just wasn't going to get too many like wide angle images. So I just had my 400 and 70 to 200. Again, it's not worth it to like ruin that camera. And then at halftime, I wanted to switch my camera bodies and my lenses, but I had to go back to the car to do that because it was raining. So I'm not going to do that outside. On my way to the car, there's a little hill, slipped, monopod stuck in the ground and just snapped. So the whole second half I had to shoot without a monopod on my 12 pound 400 and ah, back is still a little creaky, but you know, it worked out. Final thing with these, you know, bad conditions is just editing the images. Again, these temporary lights are just kind of pulsing light. So the colors are changing between images. The amount of light is changing a little bit between images. So it's just a lot of extra work while you're editing. You got these high ISO noisy photos. Now I typically just use Lightroom to edit. It's pretty basic edits. I will use the denoise sometimes depending on how high the ISO was. In this case, I definitely used it. And I know there's other software out there that will denoise your photos. But I just, I don't know, I have a lot of images that I need to deliver and if I had to run through 100 to 200 images through another software, just more time. And for me, it's not necessarily worth it. Uh, if you think differently, please let me know in the comments. Give me some suggestions how what you do and stuff like that. But for me, what I found so far is just running through Lightroom does a pretty good job and they're having new features always coming out. So it may even get better. And again, this was the worst conditions I've shot in. So. I'm not always shooting at this high eye. So if that's something that you're always shooting at and you don't need to do like a ton of images at once, I'm sure those softwares are really good and can help you out in that case. All right, so that's how I survived shooting in the worst conditions I've ever shot in. Only lost a monopod <laughs> and the gear is still pretty dry. So worked out, images were good enough to send off. Um, definitely had fewer images and definitely not as good of quality or the you know, same action that you get, especially because when it's football in the rain that bad, it's really muddy out there. Like they're just doing a lot of running plays. They're doing a lot of passing plays. So you're not even getting as many chances to get good photos. So you just got to, again, accept those conditions, know that it's going to be tough, know that you're going to miss some photos and you're just not going to get the same quality as before. Allow yourself to just, you know, maybe sit and wait for those people to come into the better light on the field and for those static moments that you may not normally shoot. All right, see you next time. If you're still here, subscribe because no one, again, is ever watching this late into the video. But please, subscribe, like, whatever. Watch the other stuff. See you next time. People are like, oh, it must be tough to shoot. Yeah, it was. It's very tough to shoot. And are you getting any photos? I don't know. We'll find out when I get home.